Okay, so here we have problem 3.6 that's uh, that requires us to solve for the moment of inertia of this entire figure upon the horizontal centroidal axis, okay, which is our x. So in order to solve for moment of inertia, we first need to find the centroid of this entire shape. Now what's our first step? Our first step is to simply divide the shape into separate parts. Let's check the lengths, okay? So here, we're already given 2 and a half and 1 and 1 half, right? So this side, we know its lengths, right? Here, how about here? We are only given one length, which is half, right? That is its width. But we're not given this length. So what do we do? We're given the length of the entire figure, which is 7 inches, right? So it's 7 inches. And we're given the two lengths of the other uh, two figures that are attached to make this figure into a hole. So we basically subtract one and one half and three fourths in order to get our missing value, which is 19 over 4. All right. Now for our final shape, we are given three by four. So we got that sorted out. And we have two and one half, which is basically the same the same length as shape number one. So we have that completed. Now that we've separated into parts and we've identified each length, our next step is finding our area, the area for each of these shapes, all right? And it's pretty simple. These are all rectangles, so we simply multiply its length with its width. Now after we've computed for each individual area for each shape, we simply take the summation which is the total area, which sums up to 8 square inches. Alright, so those are the first two steps. For our third step, remember, in order to solve for moment of inertia of the entire figure, we first need to figure out what the centroids are. So here we're gathering up the centroids of each individual shape first, before we calculate the centroid as a whole for later on. Okay, so here, for each individual shape, we already know that the centroids are going to be, if ever we're going to draw diagonal lines, it is wherever they intersect. So over here, we can assume it's here, for our number 3, for number 2, it's somewhere over here, and for number 1, it's somewhere over here. Alright, so why is it why? Because we are based upon the horizontal centroidal axis, yeah? So which means we can only measure it, this shape protruding out using the y-axis. That's why we're going to have our, the positions of our centroids based on y. And it's in inches because that is our length. So coming from the bottom, how far are these purple crosses away from the axis, the x-axis? And that is what we're going to list down here for each shape. Now over here... We already know that this length is 3 fourths, correct? So if this is our centroid, our centroid position, it's simply half of 3 by 4, right? Which is basically this. There we go. Now, for our second shape, we can also divide this by 2 if we're considering only the sh second shape. But remember, in order to find the position of this centroid, we need to base it upon the x-axis. So coming from the x-axis, which means this distance away should be included. 19 by 4 divided by 2 plus 3 over 4. Why 19 by 4 divided by 2? Because the length over here, if you remember from earlier, was 19 by 4 divided by 2. Uh, 19 by 4, we divide it by 2 to find their center, which is exactly at half. So we found this length. We found this length. Now we simply add on this length to complete our position. 
coming from our axis. So the answer is going to be 3.125. Now for our last one, we know that our length is 1 and 1 half. We simply divide it by 2 and add 19 by 4 and 3 by 4. So we can complete its position, its exact position, from our x-axis. The answer is 6 point. For our fourth step, we simply multiply our areas, each individual area, with y, the position we've gathered from earlier. And its unit's going to be in cubic inch. Okay, so this is basically our areas for each individual shape multiplied with their corresponding y position. Now, let's calculate for the value of our y bar. Now, what is this? This is our centroid of the entire figure. Earlier, we were dealing with the position of its centroid for each individual shape. Now here we're trying to figure out what the position is for the entire figure. So how do we do that? We have a fixed formula which is simply our summation of, of Ay, which we've done in step 4, and the summation for area, our, our total area, which is 8 square inches. Okay, so now let's calculate for this value. So equals, and our total area, which is 8 square inches. Now here our inches would inches square root cancel, and this exponent would cancel, but leaving us with only inches. So, the y position of our in, of the centroid of the entire figure would be 3.9453 inches, which is approximately, so this is 7 inches. Half of it is 3.5, so let's just assume that here. It's a halfway point. This is going to be 3.5. This is half. Right? So we can assume that this is 3.9, so it's going to be somewhere around here. So now we found the centroid position of our entire figure. So now let's head on to our fifth set. The fifth set is basically squaring each value per shape's y position. Now for our sixth step, it's simply multiplying our y squared with our individual shapes areas. Accordingly, we have these values. And of course, we also need to figure out the summation of a y squared. 169.9415 inches to the power of 4. Okay, so now, so now we've gathered all of our essential essential requirements. Let us now proceed to our last step, our moment of inertia, all right, upon the centroidal x-axis for each of our shapes. So now how do we calculate for moment of inertia? Now for rectangles, they have a specific formula to calculate their moment of inertia, which is base, which is the one that's parallel to the horizontal axis. Or, or parallel to whichever axis we're basing it upon, multiplied by its height, it's the other side, all divided by 12. So using this, we already know each length of our shapes. We simply need to plug it in this formula to get our values correspondingly, which is this. Now, we also need to take care of the summation. which accordingly is 5.2565 inches to the power of 4. Finally, our final requirement is, now this one is the parallel axis theorem. For this one, it's based around the x-axis, hence the subscripts. We already have these values available to us, which is our summation of the moment of inertia of per shape, upon the horizontal centroidal axis. So we already have that. 
over here. And we already have our summation of ay squared. So we simply plug in these values to get our answer. Plugging it in. And our answer. So now we have all of these requirements. We can finally, finally solve for the moment of inertia for this entire figure. Now you may be wondering, oh wait, haven't we seen this notation before already? Whenever we're, uh, whenever we're calculating for the moment of inertia for these shapes. Now you may be asking, oh no, when should we use this formula and when should we use the other one? Well, the other one is specifically for solving the moment of inertia for rectangles because we're dealing with their individual shapes. But now, the question is asking, what is the moment of, of inertia for the entire figure? And hence, this is the formula that we're going to utilize to calculate just that. Now, plugging in the values that we already have. Okay, so plugging in our values. 50.6749 inches to the power of 4. And that is your final answer.